Good morning, uh, everybody. My name is Girish, and we are here on another episode of the SEO Melbourne podcast. I'm here today uh, with the founder uh, and the owner of Farolito Spanish. Uh, Farolito Spanish is a Spanish uh, language and learning school uh, based in Melbourne, South Yarra. I'm here with uh, the owner, Jan Peterson. Hi, Jan. How's it going? Good, Girish. How are you this morning? I'm, I'm doing great, uh, Jan. Thanks for asking. So, uh, Jan, Jan here... Um, uh, you know, it has been our client for the last uh, six to eight months and we've ran some uh, pretty interesting SEO uh, campaigns and strategies for them. Uh, and today we're just, you know, going to have a bit of a chat about the uh, Spanish uh, and the language learning industry. Uh, so, Jan, tell me, tell me about Farolito Spanish. When did you guys start and, you know, what was the idea behind um, the, the entire inception of Farolito? Yeah, so, well, it's actually a very interesting one and a, and a very recent one. Yeah. Um, I, um, I came to Australia 13 years ago and I was originally working as a biologist. Okay. Um, and then after a couple of years working in biology, I started teaching Spanish um, just for a, as a hobby, right? Because I yeah. always liked teaching yeah. and it turned out to be my dream profession. Um, so after that, I went back to university, got another undergraduate degree, this time in applied linguistics. And while I was at university, I started working in Farolito Spanish. And so tell me, uh, currently with uh, Farolito, like how are your courses structured? Do you guys have, uh, you know, online courses? I'm sure last year would have been, you know, you would have had to pivot to that online. Like what are the different types, you know, course types that are currently available uh, with your, at, at Farolito? Yeah, sure. So um, there are two. Um, first is the modalities, right? Uh, yeah. We used to have only face-to-face -face classes. I don't think yeah. many schools had online classes before mm -hmm. coronavirus. Yeah. Um, so after everything that happened last year, everyone made that transition yeah. Yeah. and started offering online classes. Yeah. So for all our type of courses, um, yeah. We have the face-to-face -face and the online mode available. Online. Okay. Yeah. And it, is it mainly uh, group sessions that you have or is it one-on-one? -on -one? Like, how does that work? Right. So inside, apart from the group modality, that uh, the course yeah. modality that can be face-to-face -face or uh, online, then we have uh, what type of course it is. Uh, for example, group courses are our most popular course probably. Um, usually groups of six to seven people, they are small groups. Yeah. Um, uh, and you can study in that mode from uh, beginners to advanced levels. So we have yeah. all levels. Um, then you have uh, probably our most, uh, our second most popular one is a private lessons. Yeah. So group classes usually run after 6 p.m. Uh, so if you work after 6 p.m. or you don't have the time, um, we do run private lessons, one-on-one -on -one lessons, or sometimes two, two friends enroll together for a private lesson with the teacher. And those can be any time during the day, even on weekends. Um, okay. Then we have uh, what we call special courses. We yeah. have um, a course called Spanish 101, yeah. which is a group, um, a group course, but it's more for people who have never learned a language and you are a bit hesitant, oh, is this really going to be for me before making a big investment? Yeah. So it's a course, um, the fee for the course is a bit lower, the course yeah. is shorter, so yeah. it's, you know, just to give you a taste. It's, it's and, basically like an introduction to Spanish, which will, you know, say you were to travel to, uh, to one of the Spanish speaking countries, either in Europe or South America, how you interact with the locals, potentially order a meal, give you a bit of an idea of what, how the verb structure is. Is that what it covers in a sense? Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, that's the second main reason why people take it. One is to just yeah. give it a try, see if I continue studying or not. Yeah. And the second one is I'm not really interested in studying the full language. Yeah. I'm just going to travel to Spain or South America. I want yeah. to have a few of the basics yeah. uh, to get around, make friends. Uh, so that's another thing this course is really useful for. Okay, interesting. And so uh, touching up upon, you know, the, uh, the courses and so, you know, you, you would have had a lot, uh, loads of students studying the courses for many different reasons. What, you know, what are the, what, some of the main reasons that students, uh, you know, study Spanish over here? Is it primarily because they want to like move to a certain part, a Spanish speaking country for work and hence they, you know, uh, that is a requirement. Is it out of interest? Is it, you know, like what are the various reasons that you get people enrolling yeah. in the courses yeah i would say the first reason is actually 
um, a very romantic one. Oh, and it's yes, that there are, there are a lot of uh, Spanish speakers now in Australia. Yes. Uh, and uh, I would say about 60% of our students yeah. are studying it because they have a partner, um, a husband, yeah. a wife who speaks Spanish. They want to yeah. communicate better with, oh, the, wow. with the family. Yeah. Um, and another something that is happening uh, more recently because years have passed since the last wave of um, waves yeah. of immigration is yeah. that now they have children. So they want their children to also learn the language. Yes. And that's why we are now offering um, we are now offering Spanish for children too. Yeah. Um, so they can the children can learn. They can talk with the partner. They can talk with the in laws. Yeah. Um, so that's a very big reason. The other big reason, as you said, is um, traveling. Yeah. Um, of course, it's been a bit impacted with the last year because there is not much traveling available. Uh, but these days, uh, people see traveling coming back in the horizon. There. Yeah. Um, so they are starting to prepare. So they have a higher level. Yeah. once they're able to um, to travel sure um and there is a, a third reason it's a, a smaller um, minority which is more of an academic reason it's just out of curiosity yeah. they always wanted to know the language yeah. um, and this um, this is very common with um uh, retire people who have retired yeah okay. they always wanted to learn the language and uh, now that they have the time uh and they, um, you know the will to do it they yeah. dedicate all yeah. the retirement years too. Okay, yeah. that's that's interesting. So it's it. So you've got a you know a variety of reasons why people would study uh, this particular uh, why why pe why people would study Spanish. And would do you do you reckon do you get a still a small population that studies because they are going to start working in in a, a Spanish speaking country, and you know for in in that in that case you know would they start like would they actually go, go from the entire journey from like beginner to advanced? What would you, the usual journey be? And how long would it take to become, um, I, I, and you're saying an expert would be hard, but like a pretty fluent speaker in Spanish. Right, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a, a more recent reason too. Um, yeah. some, of our, some of Australian companies are opening uh, uh, branches in South America, especially Chile, um, yeah. Argentina. And in Spain too, so yeah, a few of our students have done it um, just recently. One of our one of our most recent students is really young, maybe twenty years old, twenty one yeah. years old. He has his first job, and there is this big chance of working in Spain in one of the branches. So he's really committed to learning the language. Okay, and that commitment is what going is what's going to influence how long it takes. Okay. Uh, we do offer intensive courses for that kind of people. Look, I just yeah. want to get it done quickly so you can do it in half of time. Yeah. Um, but usually um, what you need is what they call an upper intermediate level is what is mostly required for jobs. For jobs uh, yeah. And that can take you about two years two to years. get there if you are, if you are disciplined. If you're disciplined. Okay. That's uh and uh, just to so of course you know 2020 has been a challenging year you bought a business in 2019 and then 2020 the entire you know the pandemic it hit us all and you know the transition to um an online you know business model where most of your sessions that were held face to face now are going to be held in zoom how did you find that transition and how did more importantly how did the students adapt to that transition right um of course, at the beginning, it was a bit scary, right? Okay. Because we, we never tried that. I, I have to be honest, I was a bit reluctant to do it. How, how is that going to work? Um, but at this point, I'm really grateful that we had that situation um, because I don't think we would have taken the, the chance if we weren't yeah. forced to do it. Um, so the first two weeks were a bit complicated. Uh, we had to train our students to use the platform uh, and we had to train our teachers to use the platform too. Oh. Were, you, so, are you, were you guys on Zoom or how were you? Uh, we had nothing and we decided to adopt uh, Zoom um, because of the uh, breakout rooms. Yeah. Uh, so they are fantastic for language learning, um, the whiteboard, yeah, yeah. that's really good. Um, but most people hadn't used it before. At this point it's easy, everyone has used it in the, yeah. their jobs. Um, so we had to run extra sessions of training people. Can you connect? Can you see us? Can you set up your audio, your video? Um, so it was a lot of work the first weeks, yeah. but it just became easier and easier. And we learned from our mistakes too. Yeah. 
obviously there is a lot to organize. Um, yeah. Every class has a different link and times yeah. and all of that, but um, it's very smooth now. So yeah, that's, and, that's good. Yeah. I guess the initial implementation would have taken, you know, a bit of work, but once that, once the systems are in place, everyone will follow the structure because then it's, you know, it's, it's as simple as just logging onto the link. You know, they can easily connect with their video and the audio and right. And yeah. And so we on. as providers of a service become more efficient too. Yeah. Um, from, pe from previous uh, terms, we know, okay, this could have been done easier for the client. What can we do? this yeah. time to make it easier for them uh, so you know it's a bit of trial error, error at the beginning but yeah. at the end you end up with a very um uh, yeah system that works really well and it's yeah. really easy for us and for them too yeah, yeah. and uh, so so the, touching up on the next question so of course you know um you know when the pandemic happened a lot of businesses were forced to move their strategies online and uh, you know, t touching upon the SEO work that we did, uh, how how has that ha ha had an impact on your website? Are you, uh, you know, feeling uh, that you're getting a bit more exposure online? How you know? Uh, tell us a bit about that. And yeah, of course, Daphne, uh, how, how is she? How is she to work with as well? Yeah. So the the first thing is that when we inherited the school, um, yeah. the online presence of the school was not uh, so good. Um, yeah. I feel. Um, uh, the website was a bit outdated. Yeah. Um, our presence um, in Google was a bit all over the place. Even yeah. even finding us in, in Google Maps was a bit difficult. Bit difficult um, yeah. So even before we started the SEO with you guys, the first thing we did was organizing all of that. Uh, where is actual our actual location? Some of our we are in Saudi Arabia. Some of our locations shown in Coburg and whatnot. Okay. So yeah. So, so we organized that first. That was a lot of work. Uh, yeah. Then. We um, work with a um, graphic designer to um, get the main design of our website. Yeah. But although she did a good job with the design, yeah. uh, the SEO part under yeah. that uh, needed some yeah. some help. Yeah. Um, so that's when we contacted you guys, especially yeah. because we were in that moment of the pandemic when we realized that yes, having good SEO and having a good online presence is going to be crucial. Yes. Um, so yeah, we first. Um, spoke uh, with Daphne uh, and we really liked how like friendly yeah. the communication was and very you yeah. know very um, very accessible for yes. us so the that helped us yeah. yes that the really approach. made us go for it yeah yeah and uh, with you know with uh, the uh, did you were you guys being uh, made available of the government grant because I know that there were loads of government grants that were out there to help businesses during the pandemic uh, did did you guys actually get a uh, get an opportunity to use some of the government grants for the SEO and the website? Yeah, some of them uh, applied to us, uh, yes. and it was also yeah a great um, use of of that grant because uh, yeah. you know one of the things you want to do is okay I'm getting this money I yeah. just don't want to spend it on anything I want yeah. to spend it on something that helps me yeah. long term. So yeah. yeah, one of our first ideas we didn't even know about the concept of SEO. Okay. Until I started researching and seeing like, okay, we have a website. We yeah. are in Google Maps now. Why are we on the eighth page of yeah. uh, in Google? Google, yes, no, for mm -hmm. sure, sure. And if, you know, an SEO strategy is very, very important uh, to help you grow. And I'm sure, you know, content again is something that we, you know, emphasize within our campaigns and something that Daphne, you know, uh, has uh, and we've helped you achieve uh, during the length of this campaign so yeah. um uh, and are you guys happy with the overall result that you know we've been able to achieve in terms of exposure yeah sure one of the things there are several things that we yep. really benefited from uh, okay. one of them was the layout of the website so the user the, experience yeah right the design was uh beautiful but yep. the navigation of the page needed a bit of um yep. tweaking there uh, yeah. So that was really good. Um, the other thing is, of course, our presence in Google. Now we are in the first page, which is what everyone wants. Everyone right? wants, of course, yes. Right. Uh, so being, you know, being, uh, there are not that many Spanish schools in Melbourne, but yeah. the, the competition is it's quite tight at the top. 
So that really, really helps Especially us. for the online learning side of things, it's, it, from what I understand, it can be pretty, uh, you know, competitive because online learning, you know, you've got, you're competing against a lot of the apps as well, right? Absolutely. And yes. that's, that's where it becomes a bit challenging because these apps have a lot, you know, have a lot more resources to invest in digital. And that's when, you know, that's where it gets tricky. So, you know, talking, touching upon the apps, my next question was going to be about, the, the apps like Babel and Duolingo. Now, of course, you know, you guys provide uh, your students with a lot of course material, but do you have a lot of students that come to you and say, okay, you know, we are using these apps. So how, how does it work? Do you encourage them to continue using these apps, you know, when they're doing your courses? How does that work? Yeah, you know, as much as we, as much as we compete with the apps in a way, yeah. um, you know, as educators, we have to also recognize the, the value they have, right? Yes. So uh, many of our students come with that background. I've done yep. Duolingo or I've done another app for uh, yep. uh, three or four months. What level should I take? Yep. So, you know, the apps are really good, especially for uh, uh, taking in vocabulary, new yep. words, oh, fantastic. And they, they're fun, they're easy to use. Um, the only thing where I feel or I've seen they fail is uh, making you a fluent speaker of the language. So yes. they are fantastic in, um, in uh, if you use them together with a, with yes. a proper course yep. uh, and if you have the, that human interaction. Yep. So I don't, of course, I don't disencourage them. Uh, yep. on, the, on the contrary, it's yep. much better than being doing nothing in, yep. in your free time because you are, you are definitely learning a lot of new yeah. things. And also because the apps are easily usable, like, you know, they could be sitting on a train traveling from point A to point B and they just opened up the app and, you know, they already thrown a couple of questions at them at whatever level and you know they're made to answer which is which is great for the initial engagement correct yeah so. yeah uh, and that's uh, that's another thing where you really helped us um one of the things the apps offer is that yeah. you know short quizzes and little exactly. things you can do so one of the things we didn't have in our website was uh Oops. that that kind that, of content and yeah. you helped us Create yeah, that, no, so that's, that really that's exactly something I was also telling Daphne about, you know, when we initially started the campaign, I was like, how are we going to try and transition to that sort of type of content model? Because that's something that, you know, it's good to even try and publish like question of the day and then tag it as whatever level, because then mm -hmm. something is constantly going up on your website every day that's new. Right. And Google likes that. Google likes freshness. Google likes new content. Google likes you to be proactive on your site. So you know, that's something that I, th I definitely think, you know, even after the SEO campaign is you guys should definitely consider and, you know, keeping your website up to date with mm -hmm. as many, you know, questions possible. Yeah. yeah. Also, the, the articles you helped us write were yeah. really interesting, not only from an SEO point of view, but for the regular student, um, yeah. interesting things to read about the yeah. language, about the journey of yes. learning a language. For sure, for sure. So, uh, you know, just touching upon some of the final points, Jan, so what is the plan for Farolito moving forward? 2021 is looking slightly brighter for, for us all, you know, in terms of business, there's a lot more consumer confidence. So tell us, you know, what, what, what is in store uh, for Farolito? Are you guys looking to try and improve your presence online or like, what is the plan? You've obviously had a lot of students now that have come to you and are uh, doing classes through Zoom. So now you've got Zoom and you've also got face-to-face, -face, whereas earlier it would have only, before the pandemic, it would have only been face-to-face. -face. So, you know, what is the plan? Are you planning to try and grow more online users? Are you trying planning to like potentially open up another, you know, school in, in another area? Like what is the plan for Farolito? Yeah, well, as you know, with every um, negative event, there are mm -hmm. opportunities that open. So one of them, as you mentioned, is now we have that online presence and that's those online resources. Yeah. So one of our plans, uh, and it's already starting to move toward in that direction um, slowly, is yeah. having students from all around Australia. So now we have some students from Canberra, some students from, from Sydney. Yeah. So that's great because that means and we are not constrained by the space we have in Saudi Arabia. Um, yes. Because we're a family-owned business, and our, you know, um, our um, philosophy is having that personal connection with the school. Our school mm -hmm. is not too big, uh, but it's great having now that extra space, virtual space, where yes. we can take more students and still maintain that connection. Yes. Um, the other thing is, and this is just um, at the yeah. moment, it's just in the works. It's a dream. Uh, I, I love languages. Um, yes. Most of our teachers love languages too. They have learned a lot of them. 
Um, so we would love to offer different languages in the future. Italian is there as a plan. Yeah. Um, so that will be very good. Uh, and it's really compatible with Spanish, the culture, the language is really similar too. So that's, um, that's something that's been planned. Um, and the other thing is now that things are a bit more stable, expanding our cultural connections with other forms of the culture. Um, so our participation in cultural festivals, we have, yeah. we are going to be in two weeks, we are going to be in Federation Square participating there. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we, um, not, only, not only when it comes to the language, also uh, culinary expressions, for example, we are connected with some people who offer Spanish products for cooking and uh, yeah. uh, we are connecting with uh, tourist uh, agencies, tourism agencies that yeah. have um, tours related to Spanish and all of that. Yeah. So we want to create that network because our, our job is not only teaching the language, but also yeah. um, spreading the culture and, yeah. you know, all the, all the good things. It, it is, it, it's more of a cultural, uh, you know, affair. And I'm guessing at, um, the uh, Federation Square, you guys are participating in some Latin uh, American festival. Which one is it? Uh, so there is one in Federation Square in two weeks. Yeah. And yeah. then the week after that, there is another Latin American festival where we're going to have a, a trial class. Anyone can join for free and see how our classes are. Okay. Uh, but, you know, we want to, add up, of course, we want to be out there meeting the people. Yeah. But we also want to add to that scene that is going on and, and be part of that. Okay, that's uh, that's great news. That's uh, so, guys. If anyone wants to learn Spanish and wants to have a bit of a trial, you know where to find Jan. Uh, two two weeks from now, where is it in? In uh, Federation Square. In Federation Square. Two weeks from now in Federation Square, and then uh, you've got another event as well. So, you know, guys, stay tuned and definitely catch up with Jan from Paralito Spanish at one of those uh, venues. Yeah, thank you, Girish. And uh, yeah, like, likewise, I can say that um, if you like, if you need SEO services, I can recommend um, um, Girish services. They are fantastic. And SEO Melbourne, they, they've been great uh, with us. Um, so yeah, give, it a, give them a call. They're very nice, very approachable too. So thanks. Thanks for the kind word, Jan. <laughs> great, great chatting to you today. And uh, yeah, we'll be in touch soon. You too, Girish. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. Bye.